Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and for everyone who's new here, hi, my name is Lara, I'm glad you found me. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a beginner's buying guide for the hobby of coloring. Today I'm going to show you some books and some mediums I think are pretty good for beginners or maybe as a little starter packet or gift for someone else you would like to introduce to the hobby of coloring. A little disclaimer before I begin. The mediums and the books that I will show you are all based on preferences from me. So maybe you disagree with some of the suggestions I do, that's not a problem at all. And please beware that I am showing things that are maybe not that available in the US, for example. But I'll make sure if it is available in the US, I'm gonna link it down below. So. Keep watching down there, maybe you'll find a link. If I can provide it, I will put it down there. Okay, I'd say let's start. We are going to start with the books. The first books I can suggest for everyone will be Johanna Bassford's books. First of all, because they are very, very available in bookstores, you shouldn't have any problems to find copies of her books. And they are even things like calendars, postcard collections, artist editions. So from the normal books up to some pretty cool editions she makes out of her books, there's something for everyone. The pictures themselves like for example in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, have a very good looking hand drawn texture and I really like this. These are very, very beautiful illustrations in my opinion and in many books you can find many, many flowers. Some may not like that, many people like the books because of that and in general if you buy a Johanna Bassford book, you get nothing short of a great coloring experience. The paper is very, very thick, at least in the editions here in Europe. And the paper itself has a little bit of tooth so that it can hold many colors um, up to some good felt tip pens that don't ghost very much. And you can see if you're trying, you can get very, very beautiful pictures out of it. The next book of Johanna Bassford would be Paradise of Flowers or Flower Paradise. And as the name suggests, you have many flower pictures in here. Some like more in, on the mandala side, some like more wallpapery. Very, very beautiful pictures. And I think Johanna has something for everyone, without a doubt. <laughs> the next book I'm going to show you is a book of Jade Summer. I think Jade Summer is a pretty good company to introduce someone to coloring because they have so many things available grayscale things, non-grayscale things, something with a large print, very detailed stuff, color by number and non-color by number. So I think in Jade Summer's collection, there's something for everyone. If we just look in the back of this book, you can see a wide variety of books this company has. And I think everyone will find something that fits <laughs> for the book itself. This is a little example. These are like some quotes and sweet little doodles around it. It's a very cute book if you like to color with with some markers or felt tip pens because you have big spaces and sometimes Little spaces. I really think if you go with the Jade Summer book in the beginning, you can't do anything wrong. And they are not that expensive too. Like they range between six and ten dollars per book, depending on what you want to have and how 
expensive it is at the moment. So this is a recommendation I can give wholeheartedly. Next, I'm going to show you a few color by number books that I think are very good and some one color coloring books even if you don't have to use only one color one of the companies that comes to my mind is sun life drawing the books of sun life drawing are very inexpensive and they have a wide variety of color by number non-color by number and one color coloring books this is a little example the animals one color arts Basically, like you can see, the pictures contain some lines and some dots and you can use one color, you can use multiple colors if you want to do uh, the animal, for example, in another color than the background. And this is something simple, something quick, and you get very, very beautiful pictures out of it. So Sun Life Drawing is something that I can recommend to you. The next publisher would be Belba Family. Belba Family is uh, known in the color commun community, I'd say, for their square color by number books. This book contains teeny tiny squares with numbers inside of them. And the numbers themselves correspond to a color palette that you can find on the back and in the book itself let me search for it here you can even cut this page out and use it as a blotter page or so you can see your palette at any moment and basically you get some cool looking patterns out of that and I think these books are very, very cute. I'm using the cross stitch technique in most of them, as you can see. So instead of coloring the whole square, you just put an X inside of it. So it gives this, it, there's a little cross stitch look that you get in the end. I think that looks very, very cool. So yeah, Belba family, big books, little books, they have many things. They try some pattern, and secret pattern books and stone mosaics is something they have too. If you don't like the square format or and like maybe some thicker lines, the stone mosaics would be good for you. And as well as Sun Life Drawing and Jade Summer, they are not that expensive. This book cost me seven euros, I think. I think it was seven euros and I have 30 pictures in here and I'm like half done with this book now and I worked for hours and hours on end in this book so you really get your money's worth. The next publisher I'd like to show you is Sachin Sachdeva and this is one of his newer books. He does some mosaic books as well as color by number and now non-color by number versions. For example, this book hasn't color by number and a non-color by number version. And he pretty much has a very good variety of simple books and some harder books. But all in all, there are many, many beautiful books and pictures you can get with this publisher. So, for example, these are 3x3 three three millimeter grids too, like in the Belba family book. And these are whole colored pictures. These are pictures that you can expect from Sachin. He uses the same coloring palette. As far as I know, he uses the same one since I think the last five or six published books. So yeah, you if you have a set where you picked out the colors for his books, you don't have to change it unless <laughs> One of your pens goes dry, or if you use pencils, one of them is too short to color with. So this is his color palette, and you can see some other suggestions. If you don't like the little squares, they have bigger squares, or he has bigger squares too. So for the people who can't see that good anymore, for example, he has some simpler books. 
And yeah, in general, these are the pattern books, for example. You get some very cute and cool looking patterns. And as you can see, he, he does a lot of things. It's not only like vacation stuff or only pattern stuff. You see very cool and unique pictures in his books and I really, really like that. And like I said, he does some bigger things too, like for example, the mandalas. You can go a little bit bigger here, have some bigger spaces to color. And he has stuff with animals, stuff for girls, stuff for boys, things with pets. There's a wide, wide variety you can buy at his collections. So yeah, Sachin, definitely someone I can recommend. And the last thing would be lines, dots and spirals books. And there is a very particular reason for that. These books are available with any franchise you can think of. I saw I saw BTS stuff like this horror creatures. For specific shows there are books. There are books for specific movies, actors, everything you could imagine. There's the Lions, Dots and Spirals book for it. And I have some myself, especially for like things that I really love, like Zelda and the horror creatures, American Horror Story as a whole series. And what you can expect out of a Dots, Lines and Spirals books is something like this. You have a spiral that starts and you color the thing in between, in between those lines, there's a little space that gets thicker and thinner throughout this picture. And if you color it incorrectly, you get a picture of a person or a thing, whatever is depicted on it. So, yeah. You can really expect some cool pictures out of something you can't even really tell what it is in the beginning. <laughs> and if you start something like this, it looks like that. So you really can't see anything in the beginning. This is one of the books where you just go inwards and are finished with the picture. Some of these books, like the Spiroglyphics, go inside every other line, meet in the middle and then you go outwards again and do the same thing for the rest. And if you want, you can also color the background. So I think these books are very unique and due to the fact that nearly every fandom has an own book. <laughs> you are bound to find something that you really, really like. And these are not that expensive too. Like this book cost me like six or seven euros too. So you don't have to worry about the price here too. So yeah, this would be the book suggestions um, for a beginner. Now I want to take you to the color mediums themselves. And I'm going to show you some pencils and some wet mediums like pens and markers and what I think you should start with or you want to start with. So let's begin. For pencils, there are two things that I can suggest. First of all would be Faber-Castell, normal colored pencils. Uh, these are the 48 colors. They are going up to 60 colors and for the US folks that maybe don't have as much luck getting these, of course you can use Crayola. I think <laughs> if you would if you would go to Europe, this is this is a European Crayola. <laughs> Definitely this is like Crayola in the US. Yeah, what should I say? These are just normal. Sorry for the for the noise. <laughs> These are just normal pre-sharpened colored pencils with a hexagonal barrel. They don't have color names on them. And the color on the barrel corresponds with the color you get in the pencil. This is one of my refill sets, I should say. Every time I get a good deal on them, I stock up on one or two packets of them. They are about 8 euros 
for 84 pencils. I think with a good deal you can get the 60 set for about 12 euros. So nothing too expensive. Same goes for Crayola, the 100 packet with a good deal you can find for 10 to 12 dollars. It's not that expensive. If you want to ramp this whole thing up a little bit, and I think especially for the US, this is a pretty great alternative or a good upgrade, would be Prismacolor pencils. I think I don't have to introduce you <laughs> to choose them to you. These are very, very good pencils. Um, many artists even use them. They are very, very soft have color names and color codes on them. In the US they are even available open stock as far as I know. So if you run out of a color or damage a pencil you can get new ones no problem. This is a very old 72 set of mine. <laughs> I'm using them for a long time now. I think they are four years old. So I love these pencils really, really much and they are not that expensive. I saw a very good deal, for example, uh, on Dick Blick, $90 for the whole 150 color set. So you can't go wrong with Prismacolors. This is already artist quality and they are not that expensive. So if you like very, very full color that you want to reach with some colored pencils, I would suggest using the Prismacolor Premiers. For the wet mediums, I can only <laughs> speak for me right now, besides the one set I have. And these are the Crayola Super Tips. This is the 100 box, a very old set of mine too. Some pencils are even empty right now and I threw them away already. I think especially the US people here know these very good. These are felt tip pens with a very, very broad tip that you can use a very wide stroke with if you hold it a little bit diagonally. With a with the tip itself, you can get a very fine point if you use it very, very horizontally. So very, very good color range, very, very long lasting pens. I found out this set is like three years old now and there are still so many colors that work and I use them primarily for example <clears throat> I'm sorry I use them for uh, the Disney color by number books for example and I color <laughs> much in there so yeah I still have that many colors left so you can guess how good they are <laughs> the next recommendation would be Another product of Faber-Castell. These are the connector pens. And sorry for the noise again. This is an 80 set of the connector pens. As you can see, <laughs> they have the, their name with a reason. You can connect them together. Like They are very, very much bendable in this state and you can <laughs> Put them around something if you want. You can close them into a circle. That's very cool. And yeah, very wide color range like with the Crayola Super Tips. And you get you get much for your money. This set was about 16 euros, I, I think. I ordered it from Amazon. And like I said, good color range in general. Many yellows and reds, many greens and pinks, blues, <laughs> even much, much in the range of brown. And they have a finer tip. You can get a very fine point with them, not so much the broad point. So these are good for detailed works, for example. And you can't put the lid over <laughs> the pen itself, but you can click it on here too. So that's very cool. Good. Sorry for the little interruption. The next thing that I want to show you are the Stabilo felt tip pens. These are available in a range of 50 colors in general and 8 metallic colors. 
this is a 30 set I have right here and in the middle price range these are very 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 good pens very good felt tip pens they have more of like a rounded tip and they are extremely extremely long lasting I colored at least 40 pictures with this set and none of the colors dried out so far so these are extremely good student grade pens i'd say not artist quality by far but very very good student pens if you know what you're doing they are even water soluble if you uh, scribble them onto a surface that doesn't hold the color like some plastic and if you put some water onto it you can even get very very cool watercolor effects with them they are very very pigmented they have even even have some neon colors so if you are looking for something in the middle price range i can recommend these pencils very 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 much i love stabilo pencils and pens so so much they are so good price point of them I'd say this was a set I bought for around 18 euros, so $20. I think the whole set of 50 will cost you around 40 to $45. And the pens from Stubilo are very similar to the pens from Stettler, another uh, big company here in Germany. They are very, very good too. Um, they're only triangular with the barrel shape. So Stettler and Stabilo, for me, it's kind of the same thing. They're both very good, both very long lasting. Even the colors are very, very similar. So Stabilo or Stettler, whatever you prefer barrel wise, <laughs> should be good for you. And the last set that I want to show to you is something from Stettler. These are the Tri Plus Fine Liners. A very wide color range of 60. This is the maximum, the biggest set of Stettler fine liners. So, with the color range here, you get some very good uh, fleshy tones um, and very, very few browns, sadly. But uh, the browns that you have are very, very good, in my opinion. You get a good range of blues. <laughs> And the pen itself, or the fine liner itself, has a very, very fine point. It's uh, 0.3 millimeters. And like I said, the barrel itself is triangular. The tip itself is inside of some metal so that it doesn't bend easily. And they are very, very long lasting too, like the pens from Stettler or Stabilo. Same goes for the Stabilo fine liners, then, of course, uh, only the other way around. They have the hexagonal um, barrel. So, yeah, fine liner wise, I would suggest these for a beginner. They are not that expensive too. I got this set on a deal for 13 euros, so around 14, 15 dollars. If you can get a good deal on them, they are worth their money a hundred times. <laughs> I really like them too. So yeah, here you can see the color range. Again, a very good color range. And the last thing for today would be some alcohol markers, but there's a little disclaimer I give you. <laughs> The thing with alcohol markers is you can get some that are starting at a price point of 30 cents a marker and you can go up to 8 or 10 dollars a marker. So it really depends if you like this medium and it really depends if you want to uh, just test it out or go in as a whole and yeah. <laughs> Could sell a, you could sell a kidney to get the whole Copic set, let's be honest here. So <laughs> we are talking about much money. The disclaimer I wanted to give you. This is something uh, with a little bit of a learning curve, in my opinion. Markers 
can give you very, very even results. Alcohol markers are known for that, that they can do some of the most beautiful blends a wet medium can give you besides of oil paints and acrylic like in pen form. And they are known for this very, very beautiful groundwork where you can see any strokes. But, and this is the point, it has a little bit of a learning curve, like I said. You can just expect to color with them like normal uh, felter pens and uh, see a perfect result because of the fact that they are very much not like a felted pen. For example, let me show you this. Let me take just a little scribble thing I have here. If you color with an alcohol marker, oh goodness, <laughs> you want to really take your time and get an even layer with that. So that you have this even color. And if you let it dry for too long and start somewhere again, you can see that alcohol markers can streak too. So what you want to do when you use alcohol markers, you really want to make sure that every part of your drawing or the coloring picture you do stays wet. So if you color, for example, a circle, you can start <laughs> on the top and color your way around because the edge will be dry by the time you go around to this part again. You have to really color a little bit of here and then there again and then here and then there again so that you meet up in the middle and both sides stay wet for the same for the whole time you are doing this piece of your coloring picture. But in general they are doing very very good work and it doesn't really matter if you start with expensive or less expensive markers in the beginning. If you just want to have this like printed look, um, every set will do. For example, these are uh, some Amazon markers I bought uh, from the brand Tavalusa. This is an 80 set and I paid 20 euros for it and they are very long lasting, uh, no doubt there. In general, I'd say this is something you should buy when you are definitely into coloring. Even as a beginner, of course, if you uh, know you like the hobby, you want something bold, you want something very cool, then you can use alcohol markers, no doubt. But I always would start with a less expensive set and not uh, opting for something like the Copic markers or the Pro markers mm -hmm. in the beginning because Besides the fact that they are goddamn expensive, um, these are just um, for for the same uh, uh, things, for the same results, a very, very inexpensive set will do it for the beginning. Another very, very uh, important tip for uh, those markers is always to store them like this. They should lay down because most of them or all of them are double-ended and you don't want to put one side up and the other side down. So both of the tips always are always juicy and you don't have any kind of problem coloring with either side of them. So yeah, this was my beginner guide, my beginner buying guide for something if you want to introduce someone to coloring. All these things, like I said, don't have the biggest price point or are the hardest to color or to master and this is a overall view of your of what you might like of what you might not like of course like i said these are only suggestions uh, that i make and my preferences maybe you like something completely else and started with a super detailed kirby rosen's book and really loved it that's very very good to you and i hope you had much fun doing it but as a beginner maybe even with not so good eyes i would opt for something else so this was part one of two the next one will be the complete opposite, uh, Expert's Guide with Artist Editions and the big, big guns, big guns like uh, the Copic markers and very expensive pencils, other mediums. 
So I hope you liked this video. If you have any suggestions or comments, leave them down. I'm glad to hear from you. And if you like the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up or maybe a sub. So I hope to see you again. I hope you will have a great day. So stay healthy, stay safe and have the best day you could ever have.